This is this is the hardest thing in the world to understand, let right. alone explain right. that he's entirely God, entirely man. Yeah. But I'm trying to process how do I get the average believer to think God can actually use them in the very thing Jesus commanded us to do. So, Bill, I'm sometimes when I hear people, you know, question what we think about Jesus or what we think about the cross or was Jesus fully God or fully man? I always, I always ask, have you read our statement of faith? And yeah. it's interesting because I'm like, sometimes I'm like, think people go like, yeah, that's not what you really believe. I'm like, no, no, actually, that is <laughs> what we really believe as best as we can articulate it yeah. at that time. Yeah. And so, I mean, like, start there. And I sometimes say, like, interpret our messages in light of this foundation. Yeah. <laughs> interpret yeah. our words in light of this foundation. So, yeah. having understood this about what we believe, now I'm going to listen to that sermon or that idea or that phrase in the book with like a different sort of, uh, they mean to be aligned with these ideas right, rather, right. rather than like I'm trying to pick apart yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. So here's our uh, statement of faith. It's on our website at Bethel.com under the About Us section. It's fabulous reading. It is, I, mean, I love it. <laughs> I read it with joy. I read it to our members. Yes. Kind of, I, I say, I'm afraid you'll never read this if I don't read it out loud with you right now. So uh, we, we go through it you know, line by line. Uh, so we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one and only Son of God who uh, con was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and is God's anointed one, empowered by the Holy Spirit to inaugurate God's kingdom on earth. He was cru crucified for our sins, died, was buried, resurrected, and ascended into heaven, and is now alive today in the presence of God the Father and in his people. He is true God and true man. Amen. Amen. I mean, Amen. I, we do get excited that's, in, in membership class when we read that. But that idea of true God and true man, I helped right. you know, uh, write this. But we were trying to <coughs> align ourselves with the great creeds of the church, exactly. which is this wrestling. He's fully God and fully man. Or We talk about 100% God, 100% man. We've been just trying to articulate that he's fully God and fully man. And so that's yeah, our yeah, foundation. Yeah. Stone, is that, would you agree uh, with yeah, that? I mean, if he's not <laughs> God, we are lost. Absolutely. I mean, if he's not eternally God, he, he, he's not an ascended one as some cults believe. Right. He's eternally God, absolutely. If he's not, we're lost. We have nothing. Absolutely. We're, we're fooling ourselves by all that we're doing. Beautiful. No, it's, it's a cornerstone to faith, period. Absolutely. And Absolutely. it rests on the doctrine of the Trinity, a, a doctrine the church has wrestled to articulate as well, that sure. God is one and three, co-equal and co-eternal, yeah. uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so I I would invite folks who get anxious to go, like, no, no, this is what they mean to be saying. Sure, <laughs> I prefer sure. they would say it better, but they are trying to <laughs> preach true. along with these lines. So talking about preferring yeah. to say it better. I want to uh, read to you just a part out of your own book uh -oh. um, that, that I helped you edit. <laughs> Very first one we ever worked on, it was grueling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and in our defense, we thought there was several genius editors in a high, you know, in a high rise in New York City or somewhere. At least I did. <laughs> several theologians and uh, literary, uh, you know, editors <laughs> who would kind of comb through this and smooth it out. And no such thing happened. Yeah. In this. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Oops. we got it back and went, oh, that one that we said the editor will work it out, it, it's actually exactly as we left it. So uh, that was a bit of a shocking moment for me. Um, so this, this is uh, from chapter seven in the first couple of paragraphs there. It says, Jesus lived, uh, um, Jesus lived his earthly life with human limitation. He laid his divinity aside as he sought to fulfill the assignment given to him by the Father to live life as a man without sin and then die in the place of mankind for sin. This would be essential in his plan of uh, to redeem mankind. The sacrifice <clears throat> that could atone for sin had to be both lamb, powerless, and had to be spotless without sin. Is that like, is that the best articulation or what you meant to say, or how's it been misunderstood or? Oh goodness, it's misunderstood a lot. Yeah. I mean, I would write it differently only because of how it's heard. You know, sometimes you, you say something, but people hear something else. And uh, so my intentions really, uh, they're important to me, but they don't matter in this. I, I would change the language for sure. The first part— Because you didn't mean to be saying Jesus wasn't divine. Oh, that, exactly. So oh, it's, not, it's, oh, it's not just how they're hearing it, though. It's like the message seems to be laid aside as divinity. And, yeah, and you're kind of like that, going, I'm not saying he, he stopped being God. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, impossible. Impossible for Jesus to and, stop being and, God. Ri and ridiculous yeah. to think. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. All I was trying to do was put language to Philippians 2. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2, he says, 
he thought Jesus thought equality with God not a thing to be grasped. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's reverse engineering that comment into laying divinity aside. But because it's because people hear me saying Jesus is not God, I actually uh, a theologian friend mm-hmm. uh, wrote me and suggested that I change the language in that chapter. So this last year, I wrote the publisher and I said, "Hey, you know this is causing too much of a stir, and it's cre- it's it's communicating something I don't." I don't intend to communicate. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm having to learn to use a language that, that much better communicates what we believe. And wow. so, that, so that whole first page, I would write different. Yeah. Now, when I said— This uh, is in hum- chapter 7. I, I actually jumped to the uh, second quote instead of the first page. Oh, but okay. yeah, sorry to human, confuse you. Li- human limitation. Yeah. You use yeah. that phrase. Yeah. Jesus said it. He said, the Son of Man can do nothing right. of himself. Right. That's human limitation. Now, as God, he can do anything. Right. But my point, and and I realize that there's a whole school of thought that is contrary to this, mm-hmm. but my point is, is that Jesus chose to live in the limitations of a man dependent on the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that he, he was living in in what was possible for us. It, yeah. So he's modeling a lifestyle. And that's that's the whole point, which some still may disagree with, but it doesn't come from questioning his divinity. It, it just comes from, from the choice he would make to live a lifestyle that could actually be followed by those who had no sin yeah. and were empowered by the Holy Spirit. We could actually be disciples. Exactly. Follow we could follow, follow that ways. example. Let exactly. so me get this straight. A, a scholar actually, um, <coughs> instead of um, writing a blog post against you or uh, going on uh, developing a whole ministry or industry about, yeah. uh, about your words, actually personally contacted you and said, did you mean to say this or... Yeah, wow, actually, wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's shocking. He actually knew what I meant to say. Yeah, he, he, well, didn't even, you, he didn't ask me. Is what if I'm you saying. love people, yeah, and if you trust their foundational ideas, then you can be like, "Hey, I know you didn't mean to say this because because no. you're in the family of knowing God's He's fully God and fully man." Yeah. So yeah. this isn't speaking. When you when you truly love people, you never define them by their flaws. Yeah. And so, if you're defining somebody by your flaws, you might want to examine your love tank to see how you love. Doing. Hopes all things, believes all things, endures all yes, things. Yeah, it's yeah, true. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't turn away from things no. that need to be fixed. It's not that. It's not. And it doesn't denial. not talk or yeah. not disagree. Yeah, but it's. Yeah. But it, it it approaches things differently. Somebody could come to me about you and say something that would be completely untrue. I go, no, that's 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 not even possible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dan's, Dan's not capable of, you know. Mm-hmm. I've I've had people through the years come to me about certain friends or people they know, and I go, no, no, that's it's impossible. Yeah, 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 beautiful. Yeah. So anyway, that that's the intention. So I've uh, in the next uh, releases of that book, I I just wrote the publisher, goodness, maybe eight months or so ago. Yeah. And and said, you know, it's causing too much of a stir. It's not communicating what I intended, so let's yeah. change the language there. I want to get to another quote on that real no. quick, but yeah, you yeah. do, you do have a bit of a stubborn streak too. I mean, like, so there's two couple, so couple things you have to realize. We take the Lord super seriously, and we don't take ourselves nearly as seriously, if that makes sense. So humor is totally. a huge part of our oh, our, our culture, and so if you <laughs> if you don't get that, <laughs> you're going to misinterpret us a ton. Yeah. And also, we, we do have this idea of we're exploring who God is and how to best articulate uh, him as we, as we go forward. Totally. Um, so that, that, but that stubborn part of you, I think, works super great. Because when I, I just, I love you, but when, when, <laughs> when you keep talking about the kingdom or miracles, I'm like, could you teach about how to love my wife? Or, you know, I'm, I'm like, right, right, Bill, would you right. mind changing the subject sometimes? Could we talk about, but there's a thing in you that says, I, I'm going to keep talking about this until I see it reproduced in the people. Exactly. So you have a, I think like, an apostolic stubborn streak. That's actually a great thing that we could, so, but sometimes if people are misunderstanding you and you, and you feel if it's on purpose, yeah. I've seen you not care that's, that much. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, no, it, you know, being, being disliked isn't that bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not that bad. No, so I'm, I'm, so that you contact the editor finally after all this time and said, why don't you change that? I think, oh, that's, that's amazing. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I did it in honor of, yeah. you know, it, a theologian, Highly respected, yeah. Who who I have favor with, yeah. Well, you know, if somebody would have written me a last nasty letter, I'd probably said, "Well, you know, yeah, you, you're reading into." It. But when I have somebody mm, who can come right, to yeah. me and say, "You know what? I know what you intend to say, 
but it's triggering something in people that's not necessary. And, yeah. you know, I, I don't mind, I say stuff all the time that's on an edge just to get people to think. Sure, and yeah. I don't mind doing that. That's just part of who we are. But now, you know, when it's with family, we have time to walk it out. Yeah, but when it's broadcast everywhere, now I have to be more careful. Which, yeah, uh, uh, we've had, we've been on that journey, right? You're, we're not in Weaverville or even Reading, and yeah. then the whole the yeah. whole uh, landscape has changed underneath our feet. Yeah. I, sometimes too, I, I think that when you're trying to create momentum or a movement, like in just saying, <clears throat> "Hey, church, re reach again for prophecy, reach again for miracles." They're mm-hmm. they're powerful for setting captives free. And for yeah. transforming culture and then bringing people to a point of decision for the gospel. So you're trying to create momentum. It's hard to create momentum with nuance, you know, with the way I would kind of perfectly balance it out. Not what I'm not saying and what I'm not saying and what I, all that stuff that the teacher generally does in, in an ongoing 10-week class with mutual trust. Lots of times you're, as a speaker, preacher, you're, you're speaking pithy statements Designed to be bold, designed to yep, be provocative, yep, yep. and uh, and to put people to think. And like, I'm going to go search that out. And so, yeah. in some ways, like you that that demand for nuance in every phrase, I don't, I don't think is actually possible. Yeah. when you're when you're it's, kind of speaking as often and as uh, as you are, and and really trying to motivate people to <clears throat> embrace their inheritance. It, it's a poor way to teach, I think. I mean, for, for, well, for well, thank you for very me. much for that. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, it's, it's a it's a poor way to get action. Yeah, you know, you have to you have to challenge people's thinking. Yeah, and you may call it a stubborn streak. I call it an assignment. Oh, there, that's, that's, that's what I meant to say, dear brother. I, I, I want to make. I, a I believe better. the best. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah, you. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's. I, I. I think it's. I think it's. It's what we do. It's. It's. Yeah. We challenge people. You know. You. You have this great teaching that you do on bold conversation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know. You're not trying to bring balance in the conversation. If you've got somebody that really needs to repent and change, you're coming with the very thing yeah. that they need to know. And there are just times where you have to lay it all on the line. Yeah. And you maybe we'll say it better next week, and maybe in a year you'll study it and come to a, a, you know, a, a, a better conclusion on the theology behind the statement. But yeah. we're doing our best, you know, and that's that's all that's all I'll ever be able to do is just do my best. Yeah, let's get to this other quote. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that is all you'll be able to do is your best. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I'm going without the reading glass here. But so let me read to you. This is out of chapter two and probably the quote that I should have started with. But uh, he performed miracles, wonders, and signs as a man in right relationship to God, not as God. If he performed miracles because he was God, then they would be unattainable for us. But if he did them as a man, I am responsible to pursue his lifestyle. So this idea, um, he did miracles not as as God. What we're tr- meaning to communicate, because this has been a point of pain for some folks as they've read it and said, is Jesus not God in that moment? Did he stop being God when he when he came to earth? Um, what do you mean to be communicating? There? Well, I, I mean exactly what I said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but what's been implied okay. is that he's not God. And that's, you know, as we've already stated in yeah. this conversation, that's absolutely nonsense. If he's not God, we have nothing. We're, we're just yeah. fools going through. He never religious. stopped being God, we though. Never, never stopped. Yeah. But the, the point I, I make is that, first of all, Jesus is the one who came and said, greater works than these will you do. Mm-hmm. So here's the one who has just set a high water mark for uh, the miraculous beyond anything we've ever seen before. And then he makes this announcement and he invites us into a discipleship process where he teaches his own disciples, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, cleanse lepers. He, he, he imparts that. He includes that in the Great Commission. Mm-hmm. In Matthew 28, uh, verse 19, he, he includes that in there. So my point is, is we, are, we are called to follow an example I can't mimic God, but I can follow Jesus who chose to be dependent on the Father. This, mm-hmm. is, this is the hardest thing in the world to understand, let right. alone explain right. that he's entirely God, entirely man. Yeah. But I'm trying to process, how do I get the average believer to think God can actually use them in the very thing Jesus commanded us to do? Right, and you're you're trying to undo that thought that he did those miracles because he was God, and so therefore I can't do them. Exactly. Uh, so exactly, because yeah. then we become spectators, we become yeah. observers of the great divine plan, which I'm I'm happy for if that's how it works. But then how how do I how do I incorporate this commission to do as he did, mm-hmm. and then he says even greater. How do I incorporate that into my thinking, into my expectation, into my lifestyle? 
with having without having some explanation. For me, that's the explanation. It doesn't work for many people. Mm-hmm. I don't really care as long as the outcome is that we at least are attempting to do what Jesus said for us to do. But I'm trying to find language that will help our family to say, you know what, Jesus, although he's entirely God, he chose to live with certain limitations, and he even announced it. He yeah. says, the Son of Man can do nothing of himself. So he's describing the fact that there are restraints or restrictions. Now, as God, he can do anything. Right. He, you know, he could have called 10,000 angels, you know, the, yeah. The, yeah. The, the great hymn, the whole, yeah. you know, that that thought is still there. As God, he can do any of that. But he chose not to. He chose not to take himself off the cross. He chose not to do all the things that were at his disposal as God. Yeah. He chose to live in that restricted limitation place where because of his dependency on the Father, there's now no limitations, but it's the Holy Spirit working through him. That's my understanding. Mm-hmm. And that's how that's how I work to train a generation to... Uh, to not sit idly by, and uh, and and do nothing with what he said. But, and if I could say, like it's it's underneath <clears throat> this larger umbrella that Jesus was fully God yes. and fully man uh, the whole way, co-equal and co-eternal with God. Of this, the classic just doctrines of the ch- uh, church, the hyperstat- hypostatic union, homoousia of the same essence of the Father. So we would say uh, under that umbrella. Now we're trying to figure out how does yeah, yeah, it yeah, work? Yeah, exactly. How is a God consciousness and a human consciousness? in operation in Christ. And this is something the church has wrestled with for 2,000 years. Exactly, exactly. Um, and that we, we end up, I was just kind of re-looking at some of it tonight again, about how nuanced and how semantics are involved, <laughs> but also how complex it is to think about yeah. how God who knows everything yet actually, ha- did he have to learn he, you know, Aramaic? Did he have to learn? It's this interesting deal of how yeah. he is fully God and fully man. And I think the church oftentimes has, there's been several times when we try to over-explain that. You know, you had a human will uh, and, and uh, a man's body, and the, the church rightly said, you're over-explaining something the Lord has under-explained at some level. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and exactly. we need to kind of sit with this mystery. Like, we don't quite understand it. Yeah. It is a yeah. mystery. It's yeah. highly complex. Yeah. But it, it's somehow, yeah. it's the most powerful and best way for the Lord to communicate who he is, what he was up to, exactly. who we are. Yeah. The, the prevailing thought, Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. Under that, we're trying to work out the commission. Yeah. And the best way I know how is to use the language that he used yeah. when he said, Son of Mecca knew nothing of himself. I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father mm-hmm. say. We see those moments, and as best as I know how, you know, I'm, I'm trying to help a generation learn how to do but, that. But I also hear you say, in addition, and you've been authorized— uh, as I as I was sent, you're sent. So yes, that the it's not just that understanding of of his any sort of any sort of limitation that he would take on himself. Let's be clear. It would, any uh, uh, that's a whole different discussion. Yeah. You know, is, is is God in his sovereignty and can he self limit and what can he self limit? Like ah, I don't know, but yeah. he is inviting us into. He authorizes us and then he gives us the Holy Spirit. This is this beautiful moment where he's like, uh, it's good for you that I go to the Father. Yeah, because yeah. then you know you're going to be able to do the stuff and move in this ministry of reconciliation uh, once I go and you've received the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's also these positives, uh, not just that, <clears throat> um, it's that he, we've been invited into the abundant life of God yep. and, and to be about his business, the Father's business like he was about. Yep, exactly, exactly.